just who are the biggest fallers in dynasty football over the last month. We're going to talk about that in today's video. As always, give us a like and subscribe. And I would like to announce really quickly, we have opened up a Discord. Um, it is behind a paywall and Patreon. I leave the link in the description. You know, that's just to support us. If you appreciate the work that we're doing, we'll answer all your questions, fantasy football, dynasty trades, all that good stuff. And hopefully when we start to get more members, we'll start to put together some listener leagues, you know, some new dynasty startup leagues and some redraft leagues. So again, link in the description if you want to join our Discord. But today, we are looking at the biggest fallers, according to Keep Trade Cut, over the last 30 days. Now, we made a video last week where we looked at the biggest risers at uh, running back, wide receiver, and tight end. So we're doing the same thing here, but again, looking at the fallers. And, you know, Keep Trade Cut, it's not the, mo it's not the perfect website, but it is a good gauge on how the how the community is feeling about certain players. So we're going to go through these players, whether it's warranted or not, that they should be falling. And as a fly just flies by my screen starting off at the running back position and starting out with mr nick chubb it's sad unfortunately to see nick chubb fall from you know only four spots from rb 33 to rb um 37 uh he is down to rb 38 now and most of this is is injury related and and unfortunately i think he's going to continue to keep Falling because I don't think he's going to be ready for training camp and I don't think he's going to be ready to start the season. You know, his comments he made a couple weeks ago, maybe a little bit overblown about how people are interpreting it. He's kind of just saying doesn't have a timetable, but he's where he's supposed to be or something like that. Um, I kind of just take it as like, I would be surprised if Nick Chubb's there from week one. And what kind of player are we getting if he is back week one? He had a devastating injury. Like, it's not an injury where you hope you can come back and play football again. It's an injury where you hope you don't lose your leg. That type of bad injury where it literally got bent backwards. And I'm really worried about it. I think this is going to continue to fall. If you can somehow get off of Nick Chubb, I would. Because, again, as we get closer to the season, we're about uh, about a little over a month away from training camp starting and, and um, you know, a couple months away from preseason games. Um, as we get closer and Nick Chubb's not going to be participating, this is going to keep going down and down and down, unfortunately, because I really like Nick Chubb. Next up, we have David Montgomery, who, for whatever reason, has fallen um, eight, seven, eight spots from the RB18 down to the RB26. Um, I'm not 100% sure why. I mean, it's just the natural ebbs and flows of of dynasty football and some guys go up, some guys go down. Um, Montgomery is one of those players where during the off season, he really is never going to go up, right? Like he only goes up from his performance on the field because he's at that age where we stop valuing those players in the off season. He's 27 years old, right? I think he just turned 27 by the way. Um, so like he's at the point where during the off season, he's always going to fall a little bit. I think it's a good, you know, you can potentially capitalize on it if people are taking it as, wow, he is like the RB26. Because I think what we're going to get from David Montgomery is once again what we got last year. We're going to get a player who's going to, um, you know, he's going to have 1,100 total yards, 11, 1,200 total yards. And he's just about as good of a bet as any other non quarterback out there to have 10 double digit touchdowns this year. Um, on the ground or in the air. Like, there's not many players that you put above David Montgomery if you want to bet on and say this this player is going to have double-digit touchdowns. We've seen it two years in a row now from Jamal Williams and then David Montgomery last year. They're going to use him at the goal line. They're going to be in position to score a lot of touchdowns. They're going to run the ball um, when they're within the five-yard line. And um, he's going to have probably between attempts and catches, um, I'd say anywhere from 215 to 250, right? even if Jameer Gibbs stays healthy. So I know a lot of people are in on Jameer Gibbs. I don't really see their roles changing. I really don't. Maybe Gibbs gets a little bit more run, which he kind of was starting to get that near the end of the season. You look at Montgomery's snap percentages, um, you know, from week 14 on, he only hit over 50% once, but he had over 14 or more carries three of those five weeks. So even if he only plays 50% of the snaps or less, he's still going to get, in my opinion, 10 to 15 touches, one or two catches, and he's going to get a lot of goal line stuff. So 
Um, if you can get David Montgomery as as kind of people valuing him as you know outside as a, as an RB three essentially, um, I think he's going to be just another solid top twenty running back this year. Javante Williams is the next one, and this is another one that I expect to keep falling. Um, he's down to RB twenty eight, and I did take these numbers three four days ago, so maybe they have changed a little bit. Um, I don't know what to think of Javante because I was actually starting to get a little bit excited about Javante Williams, right? He was a great prospect coming out of college. Like in terms of his his advanced metrics were up there with, you know, the best in college football history since we've been recording those things, those broken tackles specifically, which is usually um, pretty telling in terms of success in the NFL is can you break tackles individually? Um, uh, individual from the blocking, right? Like not reliant on the block. Are you in breaking, breaking tackles when it's one-on-one -on -one in the hole with someone? So um, Javante was up there. Like he was better than Bijan Robinson and guys like that. And then, you know, we saw his rookie year and he looked good. And then we expected him to just take this massive step here too. And then he has a, a pretty bad injury, comes back from the injury and just doesn't look right. Just really doesn't look right. He had over, um, over 260 total touches. 264 to be exact, only put up just over a thousand yards, a thousand and two yards, five touchdowns. Very disappointing. And I know we all expected him to be, take some time to get back from the ACL. I don't think we expected him to be there week one, but he was. And I know we expected kind of a slow, not, not as good of a season last year, but I, I feel like we, we, we wanted to see something right? Like a four week stretch at the end of the season where he looked like the old Javante and we just did it. Now we're getting reports. Is he even going to make the team? I don't know how to interpret those, to be honest. I don't think Julian McLaughlin is the workhorse every down running back. So um, I think there's a place for Javante Williams. Um, if they're going to use him as that in between the tackles, Bo Nix, you know, dump off King. He's going to throw a lot of passes to running backs. You know, even Sean Payton and um, with the Saints every year, they're top five in running back target percentage. So if Javante's there, I think he's going to have actually a pretty good season. The problem is there's a possibility that they just don't like him. So I would not buy him. And I also, I don't think I would sell low on him. I would just hold right now and, and kind of see what's going to happen. Because I think if you sell low on him, you're not going to get great value, for, especially with the news coming out. And, um, you know, you could potentially, if he has a good first few weeks, he's going to go back up. He's one of those players that can easily rise to a top 20, top 15 running back in Dynasty. So last running back here is Chuba Hubbard. It's fallen nine spots from the RB54 to the RB63. Um, surprisingly enough, Chuba Hubbard was pretty damn good last year. Um, if you go look at, like, the stretch of games, like, he didn't do much the first five weeks. But from week six on, which is um a pretty good uh that, that's a really good stretch right you're not talking about four weeks or something like that um from week six on uh chuba hubbard was the rb18 in total points um and rb24 in points per game and if you look at from weeks 12 on where he really started to get going um, and i think that's kind of when he really took over that backfield kind of like week 12 on um he was RB9 in total points, RB15, sorry, 14 in points per game. So um, he was pretty awesome last year. Um, I think he's the backup to Jonathan Brooks. Now, Jonathan Brooks could be brought along slowly. He could. He could be brought along slowly from that ACL injury. They have no reason to kind of rush him. He's a rookie. He's part of their long-term future. You know, the first four or five weeks or so could be really good. Shuba Hubbard could be just a solid RB2 flex play, and we're not really value, valuing him that way. And also, we're not really valuing him as a, a backup, a handcuff, because if Jonathan Brooks is, you know, not right or gets injured, I think it's going to be Chuba Hubbard because he beat out Miles Sanders last year. So uh, I think he should be ranked a little bit higher. I would buy low on him if I could just to get potentially a solid flex player the first four or five weeks. At worst, you're getting a, a you know an RB2 that could get a good opportunity um, if the RB1. Into the wide receivers, we have first up DJ Moore. A small, they're actually the wide receiver market, according to Keep Trade Cut, hasn't changed too much, especially with the top end guys, which makes sense. We're in June, not a lot's happening right now. You know, training camp is going to be coming up, and that's going to start changing. But it's kind of the dead zone. You know, one of the, one of the only dead zones of the NFL. Uh, 
off season is this stretch from from OTAs or finishing to to training camp starting. So, um, you know, DJ Moore has fallen um, to the uh, RB wide receiver twenty one. I don't know what 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 to say here. You know, I'm not. I think DJ Moore is you know just to get into the topic of the Bears and. Um, you know, this wide receiver, because it's a lot of people are going to be asking questions about it. I think DJ Moore leads the team in, in route, route, routes run. I think he's out there like every snap, essentially, unless he gets hurt. Um, he's going to lead this team in targets. He's going to lead this team across across the board, in my opinion, in, in targets. Receptions could be interesting between him and Keenan Allen, depending on how they use Keenan Allen. But I think he leads in targets, yards, and touchdowns. DJ Moore does. Um and so, you know, I still think he's going to be a top 15 guy. They have no reason to to really move on from him, I don't think. You know, like he's a good wide receiver who is actually kind of at a value now considering how the wide receiver market is. You know, he has a three-year – he's getting paid about $20 million a year essentially, um, three-year, $61 million. Um, their out was already this – this off season. So um, there he's going to be on this team for the next two years. He's, I think he's going to be the number one target, at least this coming year for Caleb Williams. And then we'll see beyond that. So, um, you know, I still value him as a top 20 guy. Um, and maybe he's slightly falling out of there a little bit. Now we got a bunch of uh, rookies. We got Xavier Leggett falling from wide receiver 40 to 47. Um, you know, uh, Luke McCaffrey from wide receiver 69 to 76 and Ricky Pearsall from wide receiver 37 to 41. And th- again, this happens every year. We hype up the rookies heading into the draft and shortly after the draft, when everyone's doing their rookie drafts, these guys get hyped up. And then, you know, a month or two months or so after the NFL draft, a month or so after your rookie drafts, these guys start to come down a little bit um, for whatever reason, right? Just because the rookie hype is dying down. I will say this about both Leggett and Pearsall. Their startup ADP, um, to me, is a great value. Is a really, really, really good value. Um, I was looking at it um, recently, their startup. And um, Leggett is going at the 9-12. Ricky Pearsall, they're going like back-to-back. Leggett and Pearsall, they're going at the end of the ninth round, beginning of the 10th round. And then you look at guys like Brian Thomas, who's going at the end of the 11th round. Um, no, sorry, not not the end of the 11th. Uh, Brian Thomas is going at the end of the sixth round, and Xavier uh, Worthy is going at the mid sixth round. The discrepancy between like Worthy and Brian Thomas versus Leggett and Pearsall is way too big, in my opinion. Way too big. I understand like Pearsall is behind Debo, Ayuk, and Kittle. Probably not going to do much in 2024 if those guys all are on the team and stay healthy. Leggett, um, a lot of people, he was kind of polarizing. Uh, a lot of people didn't like him. A lot of people don't like Carolina and Bryce Young. But those players should not be three, three and a half, three and a half rounds of separation. To me, between Worthy, Brian Thomas, Leggett, and Pearsall, they are all very close in terms of the percentage chance, percentage chance that they hit. There's not a big difference between players drafted as the wide receiver 20 versus players drafted as the wide receiver 30 or, you know, sorry, um, 20th overall versus 30th overall. There's not a huge discrepancy on, on hit rate between those players. Um, now I personally like worthy a little bit more. I like Brian Thomas as a prospect more than Pierce on Leggett, but I do acknowledge like, just because I like him, that doesn't mean, you know, this is how they're going to turn out. Right. So I just think the discrepancy for these guys and again, even in the, the keep trade cut world, like you look at uh, Xavier Worthy's wide receiver 28, Brian Thomas wide receiver 27. So we're talking about 20 spots. These guys are separated by 20 spots when they're both first round picks in the 2024 NFL draft. So I think it's a little crazy of that discrepancy. And I would take advantage of that for sure. Um, if I could get Leggett or Pearsall, you know, at, at a, a huge discount compared to uh, Worthy and Brian Thomas. So um, McCaffrey, um, you know, he's a third round pick. He goes to a situation where, you know, you have a running quarterback, uh, you have McLaurin and dots in there. They drafted a tight end in what the second round. It's kind of a crowded backfield. I will say this. There was a report that came out that Jaden Daniels goes into the facilities at five 30 in the morning, six in the morning. And the only other player there is McCaffrey. Um, so is, this could be like a Cooper cup, Matthew Stafford breakfast situation. They're getting breakfast together. Jaden Daniels and McCaffrey could just be building 
um, a relationship together, right? Um, could be building up a, a connection together. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, his worth ethic is going to be there. McCaffrey, just look at Christian McCaffrey and Ed McCaffrey. Um, so uh, he, he's fine as like a dart throw. And also, you know, I know he, I know he was a third round, uh, sorry, a third round pick. Um, I think we got to scale that a little bit because this receiver class was so deep that like third round picks in 2024 are not the same as third round picks in 2023 or fourth round picks this year are not the same as fourth round picks in 2023 and, and so on. Just, so just keep that in mind. And then to, to finish up just a couple, um, couple tight ends here that have fallen Dalton Schultz from the tight end, uh, 15 to the tight end 17. Um, don't really understand this too much. I mean, I like Dalton Schultz this year. Um, I know again, crowded receiving room and all of that stuff, right? Like you have Diggs, you have, um, uh, Nico Collins, you have Tank Dell, no matter what, you know, Joe Mixon's there. Um, no matter what, the tight, the tight end, in my opinion, is always, there's always this bucket of plays and targets that are automatically going to go to the tight end, no matter how good or bad that tight end is. Teams, you never see a te you never see teams really fall between, if you look at targets, target percentage divided up between wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, I think the lowest tight ends ever get is like 12, 13%. Um, very few teams go under that. Most teams hover around 15 to 17%. And then if you have an elite tight end, you know, it's, it could be, you know, Kelsey 20, 20% 20 or higher, whatever. Um, but most teams are in that like 15 to 17% range. There's going to be targets for Dalton Schultz. There's going to be touchdown opportunities for Dalton Schultz. Uh, and if one of those guys get hurt and we're talking about Tank Dell, who people have questions about his size and if he can stay healthy. Stefan Diggs, he's getting a little bit older. If one of those guys get hurt, you know, Dalton Schultz is going to be a nice third option in that passing game. So um, I still value him as a low-end tight end one despite the the volume there. And then Ben Sinnott is the next one from tight end 14 to tight end 16. Um, the hype around Ben, ben Sinnott is pretty, pretty big. Um I would temper expectations just a little bit. I know we're all excited about, you know, Laporta and Kincaid and these rookie tight ends that came in and looked awesome. Generally, tight ends don't do very well um, their rookie year. And also, he's behind Zach Ertz, who, you know, despite what we think of Zach Ertz in terms of his age, which he is old, he's 33 years old, um, Zach Ertz was keeping Trey McBride off the field to start the start the season last year. He kept them off the field in 2022 and to start the year in 2023, he kept McBride off the field until he got hurt. Now, you can say, well, that's the coaches were dumb to not see what they had in McBride because we saw what McBride turned into. But that being said, as a for tight ends, rookie rookie tight ends are so hard because they have to learn the blocking schemes. If you're not going to block in the run game or even in the passing pass protection, you're not going to get on the field very often. You're not. So Ertz knows all that stuff. He's a veteran tight end that they can rely on, especially to start the year. So I would temper expectations with Benson in a little bit year one and uh, acknowledge that if he does have, doesn't do much in year one, he's going to fall. He's going to fall. I mean, look at, Look at Trey McBride. And maybe Trey McBride is like, well, we learn from it, right? We learn from our mistakes and we won't do that. Look at Trey McBride, who, um, you know, he went down all the way down to like tight end uh, 20 or so when he basically at the beginning of the 2023 season, uh, going into the last year, he was kind of like in the low 20s in terms of his ranking after being ranked as high as like a top 12 top 15 guy kind of like ben sinning right so not um and then he fell because he didn't do much year one so that that's in the cards for for um ben Sinat. so just keep that in mind so appreciate you guys watching we're gonna try and do these uh, once a month it's good to kind of get the lay of the land of the dynasty landscape how people are overreacting underreacting should we capitalize on it should we be worried about our assets dynasty football is all about like playing the stock market knowing when to sell knowing when to buy um, so that's our video for today. Again, like, and subscribe. And again, if you want to join our discord, click on the Patreon link, $3 a month, we'll get you in. Um, you know, 
again, we do that to so you can support us, but also to kind of um, keep the community strong and condensed. You know, people, if it's free, we're going to get a lot of people in there maybe that aren't good for the community. Whereas if we if we put a paywall behind it, it's going to take all those people out. And again, any question you have, Dynasty questions, trades, redraft stuff, we will be there, start, sit. We will answer your questions or the community will answer your questions. And also um, we're going to try and build some leagues. If we get enough people in there before the season starts, we'll do some Dynasty startups and some redraft stuff. So uh, should be fun. Appreciate you guys watching. Catch you on the next video.